What up, what up, what up, guys? Check it out. We have some alpha males together <laughs> because something extraordinary happened. Can we believe what happened? We got company A that we're going to touch on. We got company B that we're going to touch on. And they merged. And they merged. And what does that mean for the game? Can Johnny Gomes hold a conversation talking about tech? Can Johnny Gomes agree with some of the Sabre metrics that are in the forefront of MLB right now that are performance enhancing for some ball clubs and for other ball clubs is killing them? Well, I tell you what, I'm going to need some help. I'm going to need some help. And my man right here, KD, Kevin Davidson, has joined. My man, Sean, Sean Cashman, has joined. And if you guys can get as excited as I am about this, this is going to be beautiful. My job is to extract as much knowledge that you have gathered in that brain in the baseball IQ world. That's my job. That's what I'm here to do. My baseball IQ is uh, 12 years in the big leagues, two-time world champ. That's that's plenty. That's plenty for right there. KD, KD, how are we doing? Uh, I, I'm doing much better after hearing that, man. Uh, I love having you on my team. I can tell you that much. Yeah, yeah. Well, I tell you what, you can't just be on this team without numbers. And I want to touch on that. You can't be on this team without optics. Is that right, Sean? Optics? Absolutely. I love that. Okay, guys. KD, um, I want I want you to give me a quick uh, press release if you can, or I want you to with the baseball ner world what's happening. Well, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to announce that uh, Baseball Cloud has acquired Yakutech, um, uh along with uh, Sean Cashman has joined our group and is a part of it who Sean has been running Yakutech for the last year and a half. Uh, but essentially, yeah, we're looking to uh, create an end-to-end -end solution for the industry. Um, Sean has absolutely killed it the last uh, year and a half and kind of taking off of what the, the foundation of what Yakutech has done and really being able to cap capture technology from a, from the optical uh, system. Um, it, it's exciting, man. It's, it's good. I mean, we're, Sean and I are both excited. I know, I know you're excited. Uh, there's a lot of big things happening in the future, but there, there's, the, the industry is about to take a big, big transition uh, to, to a different level and, it, and it's, it's exciting to be a part of. I love that, I love that. So I hear the name baseball cloud, right? So is that pitching, is that hitting, is that amateur, is that big leagues? So basically the things that are coming out right now is either a helping hitting gimmick, right? Like put this on your elbow, put this on here, or it's a video game or it's a VR. So baseball cloud, give me a quick rundown how to find it, how to get it, and what it does. Well, I'll, I'll start off with what it does. I mean, it's the whole concept about, I mean, you see all these gimmicks. I mean, you use the word gimmicks. I mean, I see guys chopping off bananas with a, with a machete. I see guys bouncing on one, one leg with, on a balloon. You know, at the end of the day, I mean, I think Baseball Cloud's concept is designed to say, prove it to me. You know, I mean, prove it. You know, if, if that works, the data should prove it. You know, so, so we just focus on kind of housing the data, consolidating the data, you know, making the data useful. Um, at the end of the day, if you're going to train a guy to balance on one leg, bark like a dog and swing, um, and, and that's, and you're going to promise the guy that it's going to help him hit a ball harder, then we're just there to validate that and prove it. Um, you know, at, and for, for us, I think we, we just identified the, we, we targeted the solution of saying at the end of the day, data is great. I mean, there's, there's a, everybody all agrees. I mean, nobody can argue that data at the end of the day, which is information is great. But the, the big problem that everybody always comes into when it comes to data is what do you do with it? I mean, we just like to say we're the company that, that it's what you do with your data at the end of the day when you capture it in the baseball or softball setting. You know, and Sean, Sean's whole responsibility is just making sure and worrying about that we, we actually get some, gam, some damn good data to be able to capture and utilize and make use of because there's nothing worse than having bad data, which a lot of the industry has seen so far. So basically what we have is we have the data king, the database, the ultimate baseball card of every single stat you could imagine on one platform. 
And then we have the device that captures that, and that's what merged. So Baseball Cloud been around for a while, Yakker Tech been around for a while. I consider this an absolute monopoly in the data world, in the baseball world, in the performance enhancing world for these two companies to merge, to be underneath one umbrella, to bounce ideas off each other, to get better, to know what works and what doesn't work and to prove who's good and who's not good. And I honestly couldn't think of a better platform for this is kind of like the, the college level, right? Because of how fast they can make uh, adjustments and it's not really player development. Like we got to win tonight and you got three or four years with that kid. So if we can find out that this kid is not good on the pull side or not good on the opposite side, or this kid's hitting 330 and his exit velocity is an average at 95, but his launch angle is at a 12. So if you're telling me we can take that 12 and bring it to a 26, now we have 330 with more homers. Now, if we go and do that and we're losing the batting average, we have to do this. So basically this is probably the most powerful coaching tool. Would you agree? I, I obviously do. I mean, I, I, I think, I mean, you use it all the time in our meetings uh, about performance enhancing. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, you know, it, it, data in this new school generation, it's not about launch angle, exit velocity, spin rate. I mean, a lot of the industry understands it as that, but it's just about, you know, you as a player knowing, hey, do I do damage on the ball in or I do damage on the ball away? I mean, hell, do you know as a player, you played, you know, you know damn well. I mean, you know yourself pretty damn well, but it, you as a player, could you really go in and, and accurately and, and to know it, know that what part of the zone that you hit the ball the hardest in and really what that exit velocity was on each part of the zone and really know how big of a discrepancy maybe it was between different parts of the zone. I mean, at the end of the day, just knowing that information is valuable. That's, that's really all this stuff is. It's not about, you know, saying, hey, you know, data doesn't tell you to take that ball down and away and try to hit it up as far as you can to the pull side. And, and increase the launch angle. Data's not saying that, you know? I mean, that that's the whole big misconception about it. It's just saying, hey, this is what I do. Now you, Johnny Gomes, as a big league player, can ultimately decide how you wanna handle training for that. But the the one big part of this that that I felt and that we saw as Baseball Cloud, that the industry was missing at, the, at that minor league level and down and kind of the college level and down was really consistent, accurate, streamlined data. You know, but that, that's just a byproduct of the industry and the business. I mean, a lot of big money is now flown into optical tracking. You know, optical tracking is, I mean, we can see guys have, we can see people having a picnic on the moon from optical tracking. You just have to wait till that kind of technology is interested in a space like baseball or softball. I mean, and ultimately for us, Yakrotec was. And ultimately for us, Yakrotec had Sean Cashman. You know, and Sean, I mean, Oh, baseball cloud is only as valuable at this point now at the data and the data quality that Sean Casperin produces us, you know, with his systems. Yeah. So, so you have obviously been in charge of baseball cloud for a while. So now you didn't care about the data that was coming in. You got Trackman, you got Rapsodo, you got Blast. Obviously some of these companies took off more than others, but I think, a person like yourself, more than anyone else, you saw all this data come in. You saw Blast come in. You saw Rap Soto, Trackman, Hawkeye. Now let's talk about, and we can bring Sean in too, of why you kind of chased down Yakker Tech. Why didn't you, I mean, Rap Soto's huge. I don't know if that was an option. You know, obviously what companies for sale, this and that, are they willing to merge? Are they willing to, you know, do all this stuff? But, um, from my understanding, what, what I love about this is like you had your eye on Yakker Tech for a while and, and explain to all of us of, of why Yakker Tech. Yeah, man. I mean, it's, it's honestly what really brought us to the point that why we're even here today and having a podcast, but it kind of goes back to a conversation I had with Sig Meidel. Um, Sig was kind of, you know, really was the face of the, a lot of this new school analytics and data capturing. I mean, he was the, the guy that everybody referred to as the NASA scientist that came over to Houston with uh, Lunau. And then now he's now serves as the, uh, I believe, a president of baseball ops for the Orioles. 
And, and I was fortunate enough to have a conversation with him for two hours one day and share what I was doing. Uh, he was with Houston at the time. You know, I have a buddy of mine, former teammate, Josh Bonifay, who was uh, director of player development for Houston. And I said, you know, Josh, if you can introduce me to, to SIG, that'd be, that'd be huge. And, you know, SIG is like the Derek Jeter of like analytics world. I mean, whether you're into it or not, I mean, he's the kind of the godfather behind it. And SIG gave me two hours of my time, of his time. And, and one of the things that uh, the biggest thing I think I took away from it was he told me, uh, or he asked me if I had ever heard of a company called Yakrotech. And uh, he had told me about their technology. He had told me about kind of their engineering team and their staff of, you know, what they had found and what they had created. But, but he also kind of identified a lot of different challenges that, that they had. You know, the, the founding team wasn't a, a baseball family. You know, they weren't baseball guys. Uh, they really just wanted to capture optical uh, tracking on a baseball. Uh, they knew it was a, a huge need in the marketplace. And they, they kind of, lack of a better term, cracked the code on it. Uh, but SIG said, hey, make sure you pay attention to them because they, they have the highest quality data. You know, everybody else has good enough data. And that stuck in my head because if SIG was saying this, I mean, I, I kind of got a little nervous at first because I, I never heard of them. I didn't know what they were up to or what they were going to do. Uh, and I, as I got to know the, the founder and uh, the, the founding team, you know, it, what SIG said was right. I mean, they, they had uh, the, the technology was there. They didn't have a very good user experience. I mean, it didn't look sexy. And at the end of the day, to the industry, it has to look sexy. I mean, because they got to create a, an opportunity out of it. I mean, you can't bring in a big leaguer and have something look, you know, like it was done in 1980, you know, at the end of the day. But they don't care that it, it, it works and it's accurate. They just kind of, they're paying attention to the way, it, the way it looks. So anyways, I mean, we got very involved with them and then we started seeing, you know, they started making some market penetration, you know, fortunately with Sean, Sean made a, Sean and his team made a, a pretty good investment into the Acrotech. I mean, they, Sean knew it well enough and, and thought it was something that was going to take off and do well. And they made an investment and that really get, kind of gave the Acrotech the opportunity to kind of propel in the industry and for us, it just gave us the ability to really see and understand their data. And, you know, when you get that data coming in and every other company's data coming in and you hear, you hear from the customers and the customers are looking at your platform to use this information, uh, you know, you start getting less and less questions about the quality of the data when it came to Yakrotech. Um, you know, and, and really, I, I think really what it was missing was ultimately Sean Cashman. And, and he kind of stepped in there about a year and a half ago. And uh, I think what he's done with the company and, and what he's found and where he's taken it. And uh, it, it's been something that became extremely attractive to us, you know, primarily because of what Sean was doing. And, and I think what we're able to do now and in the future is gonna, is, is gonna be an opportunity for us that we're gonna be excited about. Yeah, Sean, so let's, um, let's get everyone up to steam right here quick, right? So we're talking about ball tracking. And I think when you talk about ball tracking, you would think all of these devices that are tracking the ball are created equal and are the same thing. So that being said, aren't they all like the same style of tracking? Um, good question. I, I think everyone, I mean, in, in generalities, like everyone's capturing similar uh, similar metrics, but uh, how everyone does it is slightly different um, than than everyone else. Uh, but before before I answer that, like Katie saying, like you know, all this stuff with the Agritech, you know, because of me. But I mean, in, in all reality, like we we have an amazing team, we have an amazing engineering group, you know, and we just have a lot of people that really care, you know, and uh, they really care about about the coach, about the player, and. Um, I think that that is the most uh, intriguing thing and that, that, that is the most important thing that we have uh, going for us from, you know, a, a customer service rep all the way to like our lead physicist and lead engineer. So um, I just wanted to clarify that, but uh, appreciate the, the words. I, I just love Sean. Sean. Sean taught me how to make a breakfast burrito. So I got to give him a lot of credit. Got to have him. Got to have him. That he's the man that he makes the best breakfast burrito I've ever had. My he wife loves me. Happy birthday too. I mean, I I wish we have a minute to swing, sing him happy birthday, but I'm I'm sure you got thousands of birthday texts. <laughs> yeah, it's been. A... I just want you to touch on. So basically, what I'm thinking of as someone listening to this or something like this, like a radar gun, right? Aren't isn't that what we're talking? Like a radar gun is a radar gun. So now you're gonna throw optics at me. So you're telling me some of these devices have a legit by camera like a video camera or a 
photo camera in it and some don't? Yes, yeah, so, uh, some some companies use, uh, you know, radar, um, just like your typical radar gun, and they have uh, better radar panels. Some companies uh, Doppler radar, some are single cameras, you know, and scale on all the way up to, you know, a dozen plus cameras um, in, in the big leagues with, with, uh, with other companies. Um, where we where we are, um, and, I, and I think this was important. I, I think I think ten years ago, five years ago, even. Um, I, I think I think everyone, baseball in general, you know, um, coaches, players, everybody, was just drinking from the you know from the fire hose. You know, it was just let's get as much data as we got and as we can as we can uh, gather, and we don't know if this is good, if this is bad, or for most cases, don't even know what to do with it. And I, and I definitely guilty I was one of those people you know I mean to the nth degree I mean I remember getting my first first printout after a game from a from a track man report um we were at Arizona State University and uh I remember looking at this I'm like oh shit we have a you know we have a very expensive radar gun because I don't know what the hell any of this shit means you know um <clears throat> but you know as times you know times you know move on like you have to adapt right you know not so much, you know, like you get all this like old school versus new school and, um, you know, uh, Clint Hurdle uh, spoke to us a couple of weeks ago and he had like the best line I ever heard in my life, right? And he goes, he was talking about, um, he was talking about his his team in uh, 2013, I think when they broke their, uh, their playoff uh, drought in Pittsburgh. And uh, he, he was talking about how, um, I don't want to steal this from you, Clint, if you're listening, but I'm gonna. Um, he was talking about how everyone's fighting, you know, like you have the old school guys, like this is how we're gonna do it. You have the new school guys, well, you know, you're stupid. I'm smarter than you. I got an Ivy League degree. You know, we're gonna do it this way. You know, and then Clint, Clint had to break it up because I don't care, you know, who you are or what school you, what school you're from, as long as we're in school together. And I, I think that there's a huge gap. Um, in baseball, and, and and I've seen it from a couple different levels on the coaching side, um, where if my my dream here is for Yacker Tech to kind of to kind of live in that middle, um, you know, where where we we can kind of bridge the gap and 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 just honestly develop products for baseball players and for baseball coaches that are developed by baseball players and baseball coaches. Yeah, that's exactly it. I mean, so. We had a whole bunch of really good ball players, and a lot of them are in the Hall of Fame without optics and without launch angle and without all this. We also had some really good music on vinyl, right? And now look where we're at, right? So players are evolving, players are getting smarter. We're kind of figuring out what works and how to get there faster. And I think that's the most impressive thing about data. So I'm sure Babe Ruth knew back in the day, if he hit the ball in the ground, it wasn't going to be a homer. And I think if he hit the ground a lot in batting practice, it wasn't going to be a homer. Um, personally, when I played, my batting practice was literally judged on. I didn't want the ball to hit the infield dirt. That was called launch angle. <laughs> if the infield dirt, it wasn't a good launch. And I'm trying to launch the ball in batting practice because I want to hit homers in the game. So might as well practice hitting homers. So we started putting a number on that. But the idea of all this has always been around forever. So when you talk about old school and new school and the eye test and not the eye test and I need his heartbeat and I need his brain. Well, that, that's all in the eye of the beholder. But if I tell you right away, this kid hits the ball 101 miles per hour on average, and this kid hits the ball 72 on average, but this kid plays the game really hard and fast and is always early to practice and stays late, well, the numbers aren't going to lie. Can you get this kid from 72 to 100 with the drills and the knowledge? Well, yeah, but this is basically like a baseline of for coaches that can help them take the players to the next level and win ball games. Right. And, and the thing is, wouldn't you want to know at the end of the day, forget about anything else, take it to dumb it down a little bit more. Wouldn't you want to know how hard Babe Ruth hit a ball? Oh, you, I, you know I, what I mean? I mean, yeah, wouldn't you want to know? 
Cash, can we get on that? You're the camera guy. I mean, there, there's got to be an app or something you can invent, right? I need to know that. Sure, we can figure it out. Yeah, it's easy stuff. I mean, I mean, think about that. I mean, you know, you hear all these people talk about good or bad. The bottom line is just use the information. You, you know, Eugene Bleeker, who is, is as extreme as they come in the industry, Eugene Bleeker says it best. I mean, you just need more data. I mean, I would love to know. I mean, me and you can talk as much shit as we want about each other and my ability compared to your ability. Well, let's look at our numbers. Let's look at our ball. You know, let's see, KD, dude, you only hit a ball 101 miles an hour, dude. That, that was your max. You understand how, how much harder I hit it than you? Okay. Oh, shit, Johnny, you win. Okay, I get it. You know what I mean? That's, that's all it really is. I mean, use the data to kind of refer and really prove your point. I mean, that's what I love about it. I mean, too many people get stuck on you know, hitting a banana off, hitting a banana from a machete, you know, as data. That's not, that's not data, guys. Okay, just don't put that in the same bucket as, as you know, as really this valuable information. Because I would love to see your data. I mean, I would love to see because at the end of the day, you, guess what? Your data, you played 12 years in the big leagues be, because of your data. Your data produced your batting average, your home runs, your, you know, your career, your everything. So just to be able to know what it takes and what kind of data that is to play at that level. I mean, tell me that's not valuable information. Yeah, that's absolutely it. And so let me tell you how I dove into data and it wasn't launch angle. It wasn't exit velocity. It was what pitchers sequence happened, right? What does he throw after a changeup? What does he throw in a 2-0 count? What does he throw in a 2-0 count with runners in scoring position? What does he throw in a 2-0 count with runner on third, less than two? And if you think there's no similarities in those, you're a thousand percent wrong because pitchers are absolutely a creature of habit. And if it works, they're going to do it again. And if it works, they're going to do it again. And they, at times, from talking to pitchers, are like, yeah, I just can't believe they're not sitting on that pitch well, because they're not looking up the data. And um, is it like learning another language? Well, I, I guess I would argue yes, but you could learn to read data faster than you can learn to speak Japanese or Spanish or any other language. Johnny, let, let, me, let, me, ask, let, me, ask, let me ask you this question. When yeah. you played, okay, when the, the, was everybody's 90 mile an hour fastball the exact same? No. Okay, so forget take everything else out of the equation. The reason why everybody's 90 miles an hour fa fastball was not the same was because the data was different off of that 90 mile an hour fastball. So when I just look at this from a very, very, very common sense perspective, if I was able to tell you that this guy's fastball, who you've never seen whatsoever, reminded you of Garrett Cole. Okay, so every time that you face Garrett Cole, okay, and remembering that fastball, because I'm sure you as a player have a Rolodex in your head about everybody's fastball slider, change up, curveball mix, and how their curveball bites different, comes at you different. If somebody was able to kind of correlate and say, hey, I'm not telling you it's going to be the exact same, but when you're going up to that box, rather than taking a pitch or, you know, doing the whole old school thing of being in the on-deck circle and seeing it, which, hey, that's great. That's a good eye wash drill and everything else, but that's fine. But if I were able to say that this pitch is going to be very similar to that guy, would that not be valuable? KD, let me break it down from this side because I'm also a par weather guy. Okay, so <laughs> When you're out in Florida and it's 88 degrees, and then when you're here in the desert in Scottsdale, Arizona, and it's 88 degrees, it's a two totally different 88. And oh. if someone told me when I was facing Aaron Harang, if you look up on the miles per hour and it says 90, but I need you to pretend it's 95 because that's what it looked like, right? <laughs> By you. And then you kind of get confused. You go back to the video room and you're like, okay, let me not get embarrassed here. Let me make sure there wasn't 90 right down the middle. And it was 90 right down the middle. And I, you know, we didn't have spin rate. We didn't have all this stuff. It was just starting to come and they're starting to get the, um, you know, the percentages and all this stuff, but poof, spin rate whoa, what is that? That's back in the day when they're talking about, it used to be like a rise fastball, you know, or Pedro Martinez, it actually used to go up. Well, scientists, scientifically proven, the ball can't go up, but it can stay true, 
right? The ball stays true or it goes or the ball goes this way. Mariano Rivera's cutter. If I, Sean, you're on it. If I can get some data on that cutter, that's what I'd want to do when I was 12 is trying to get to that baseline. And I'd want to watch my cutter to get to this and get to this and get to this and get to that number. So that's why I, I guess, you know, maybe I'll get a t-shirt for it. This is data is performance enhancing, but that, that's what I'm going to keep driving home. And I wish at the same time too, I always talk to hitting coaches and I'm like, okay, you're a hitting coach. Now you're done playing da da da. What do you know now that you wish you would have known when you're a player? It's my favorite question to ask. You know, there's the point, the bat point, there's the rotation, there's this, there's that. What I know now, what I wish I would have known then is what the highest chase percentage is per count. Chase percent in OO, chase percent in 2 Well, the highest chase percent in the big leagues is the 3-2 count. So if I would have just put my bat on my shoulder on 3-2 my whole career, might have lost a couple of homers, but my on base probably would have went up 80%. Because the chase on a 3-2 count is the highest. And you think about it and you're like, wow, yeah. So I've been in the at-bat for a minimum of five pitches. Probably fouled two off, so now I'm at seven. So in my head, I know what's coming next. So you cheat and you go and you chase and you're out. And you snap and it costs you a helmet or a bat or a friend or an F word or whatever. But man, that's, that, that's data. That's not nerdy crap. That's not like, you know, everyone wants to go data to like launch angle. Like, no, there, there, there's just so much more there. Well, I mean, I think, I think the one thing I've heard, and, and I can't say this for sure, this is just, uh, it was an, an example that somebody threw out there to me that they were pretty confident on, but it, it made a lot of sense to me, is when you think about Mariano Rivera and his cutter, you know, what, to, to know the data on Mariano Rivera and his cutter, is so now today that the guy who's he's, he's currently the head of a major league organization and he said ultimately the secret sauce with his cutter was it broke about six to nine inches later than every other cutter it, it didn't necessarily break more than any other cutter i mean if you go look at the big league guys today i mean these guys are all throwing 98 and they're all the balls cut but what way mario rara proved people always ask well what's the best data What's the best pitch from a data perspective? I have no choice but to say Mario Rivera's cutter because he's the only guy outside of a knuckleball guy to prove you can dominate the game with one pitch. Well, that to me is the best pitch ever to play in baseball. Well, what's the separating factor in that pitch compared to everything else? Well, it may just be later break. Okay, well, then for me, I want to figure out how to make the ball break as late as possible. I don't even know if it is possible. Only Sean can determine that. And if it is, we just want to make that uh, visual and show you what that means. Yeah, I mean, you know, there, there's two guys that really cost years on my life and, you know, fortunate to play a while. But there's certain guys that are good. There's certain guys that you compete against. And there's certain guys that you are facing that you hope your family's not watching. <laughs> it, it, they'll, they'll embarrass you, right? So the first big embarrassing moment, you know, was – Mario Rivera, you know, I've, I've hit a whole bunch and I've hit a whole bunch. And when you get the ball, like close to the label, like, man, that's tough. You got jammed. But when you get it close to your thumb, right? Like when you're a legit, like 27 inches off as a major league hitter, you've done a lot. You've seen a lot that, that I mean, and then knowing in your head, getting ready to swing, taking a swing and hoping it doesn't literally hit your top hand and having no explanation for it. <laughs> would have loved to have the data. Would love to be able to figure it out. The other guy, this guy that hit out for a long, long time up in the, the Northwest, King Felix. I don't know if you heard of him. Probably see him in Cooperstown one day. <laughs> but I was with the uh, Devil Rays, so we weren't exactly um, knocking down the door of the playoffs very often. But he – we faced him and he'd mess around a whole bunch. He went the whole game. He was legitimately throwing his changeup harder than his fastball. <laughs> I, I want to know everything about that. I want to know everything about that. For one, to try and figure out how to hit it. So you're telling me when he throws 91, it's just going to be straight and right there. But when he throws 94, it's going to dive down and disappear. 
That's backwards. That's backwards. I want to know everything about that. I'm a baseball junkie. I'm a rat. I want to know how. I want to know what. I want to know the pro <laughs> I want to know the finger grip. I want to know everything about it because I want to teach my kid that. And we're, we're getting pretty close to figuring it out. If we can keep Sean on track and getting this camera better, we'll be in great shape. I agree. I agree. It's, it, like, interesting about like Mariano um, and the cutter there. You, you know, the, it's it's not a it's not a secret when when he was coming up. You know, he didn't throw a cutter. You know, he forced him to you know your normal you know four pitch repertoire guy coming out of rehab, kind of had the, the quote unquote yips. You know, and he couldn't throw the ball straight. And and with me, I, I almost had the same thing. I, I I tore my shoulder and like throwing BP. It's like every every third or fourth pitch, I'm like throwing with like the nastiest cutter I've ever thrown in my life. And I'm just trying to throw it straight, and you know I'm pissing off every hitter I'm throwing at. But I'm like fuck. I wish I knew that. I wish I knew how to throw that. You know when I was still playing. I mean I, I wasn't a good player anyway. But it would have been cool to at least try, try it. You know, um, but like advancement in technology too. I mean it, it would be interesting to to go back and see that and to see see certain certain guys because you, you hear that a lot too like guys that just throw throw pitches like balls doing stuff that they didn't even expect it to do and they just keep keep going with it but um uh, our lead engineer uh, architect physicist uh, aiden seaman uh created a, a whole new whole new uh, way to analyze uh baseball with um this year with uh seam orientation and basically coming up with a grid like latitude longitude on the ball so we actually know exactly not only like the exact spin axis and tilt of the baseball, but exactly how the ball was thrown or released out of your hand. This um, dude is smart, like really, 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 really smart. And it's just, it's interesting to, to, to see it because, you know, we, we compare uh, some of that stuff to some, some other numbers we have and, you know, the, the, the differences of movement and movement profiles just based on like wrist angle or, or seam orientation on the ball. And currently, we're the only we're the only company that does that right now. So, um, which is which is exciting and, and, and great, but it's also we have to do a good job in educating the market and educating our um, our customers and, and um, you know future customers on on why and how we you know derive and, and get these get these numbers and you know what they mean. Yeah, I think I think where the numbers are now, where the data is now, I think this generation, I say this generation in the big leagues. Um, can talk about it they can educate it so when i was coming up these numbers weren't around and i'm not going to mention any names um but i'll do organizations it was the cincinnati reds obviously the oldest organization in baseball so they have a lot of alum uh the oakland a's obviously one of two organizations that went back or three peat in the world series boom 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 imagine that one world series one world series won the World Series. Pretty cool. Them and the Yankees. So these old alums that would come back that played in the 70s, early 80s, you know, would talk hitting and, you know, would talk this and that. And I'm like, in my head, like, bro, I've watched 20 of your highlights. You did not do that. Like, <laughs> how you're teaching me is not what you were doing at all. Like, to be able to play at the highest level is really hard and really cool and that. But to be able to teach what you did, to be able to teach in multiple languages what you did is a really, really hard school so or really hard task. So in saying that, let's look at all the major league staff all over. And then you would think from an uneducated person, it'd be all the best players that have, have ever played baseball. Well, that's not the case. Those guys these days are making a lot of money and they're going home, don't have time to coach. But the other guys, they don't know how to coach. They know how to hit. They know how to throw. They know how to field a ground ball. Ground ball like this, boom, 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 like this. You got uh, uh, this. I'm like, no, bro, I saw you throw an underhand like the whole time. Like, you're teaching me how to do it right. You did it wrong, but you're teaching me like this. But the numbers aren't going to lie. The numbers are not going to lie. And th that's what I'm excited about for the next generation even after that to when a kid will be able to have a yakker tech at his field and we'll ask for the information afterwards and there's going to be 238 whatever stats and he's going to look at one and this one is going to make him better they two are going to make him better these three or the kid that understands it and he's a 
straight A student, baseball IQ wise, and he can look at it all. But it's like my velocity is dropping. Maybe his velocity is dropping, dropping, dropping. I don't know. Well, guess what? Maybe your arm slot's dropping. You know, maybe your release point isn't as far. You're staying behind it. So that's why I, I, I'm really excited about the Yakker Tech and the data uh, baseball cloud merging, which for me is like a monopoly of like the company that's filming and receiving the data is pushing it out on baseball cloud, which is merged together. And when they two merge together, my gosh, what's next. So I'm, I'm just really excited. And I think you're going to see players get better, faster. And then we're also at the same time, what I love to say is we're going to see the dude who's fake good. The guy who is fake good. And that's who arbitrators on the pro side love to go to arbitration with because they have the data. Yep. Yep. I mean, I, I think that, I think the industry is going to change right before our very eyes. I mean, I think this, this information is extremely valuable. I mean, I know I caught for a lot, a lot of years and, you know, a guy tries a new grip and the guy tries to come up with a new cutter or curveball. And he's like, you know, what do you think? And uh, hell, your job's to give the guy confidence, you know, at the end of the day. But so you're like, yeah, that's great. But you don't know if it's great. You know, I mean, let, let's just look at it and decide, hey, man, when you try it this way, this is what works. And if you try this way, this this thing doesn't work. You're going to get your ass lit. So let's let's kind of avoid that that pitch. Um, I, you know, I think I think technology, it's, it's fascinating to see how this is going to play into the game. You know, I think a lot of people have to understand. I mean, I think there's a big challenge in the industry. Um, I think baseball in general has a challenge in front of them as far as uh, enhancing the fan experience and getting more people engaged in the game. I mean, I think, you know, ultimately that's how this technology was first introduced uh, at this level. I mean, you look at what Major League Baseball is trying to do to increase their fan base, but to be able to just be a kid and understand how to speak that next generation's language. I mean, Sean or Johnny, you, you have kids. I mean, you know, I mean, our kids, they know how to use an iPad better than we do. So it, it comes to the point where, you know, our version of old school is hearing from the guy that never had technology or never understood anything. And you can kind of appreciate his old school kind of approach and his experience of it. But th this next generation of, of, of kids in society, they just learn differently. I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, you could have better information, but if you articulate it to a player in a, in a language that he's not really used to, which again is partly the human language. I mean, you, we got to manage that. But these kids grow up with technology at the end of the day. So let's just figure out a way to utilize it in the best way to help them become better baseball players, um, help them you know, perform better, play better, and maximize their performance. Because at the end of the day, if nothing else, it, I mean, we, we did a study at Baseball Cloud, and, and I know Sean and I talk about this all the time, but we think about when you ask a parent, as a parent, are you qualified to assess if your son is good enough to play at – a certain college, University of Florida. Okay, every day, mom and dad, I'm sorry. I love you guys to death. Johnny, you have kids. I now have a son. I cannot properly evaluate my son. I, I just can't. I, I give up. Okay, but the data actually can. Okay, and the data can actually say, hey, if you're paying all this money for a lesson to get your son better, is he getting better? Oh, I mean, are you qualified to determine it? And if he gets three hits after his first lesson, that doesn't mean he got better, okay? Now, it's not a negative thing, but it just doesn't mean it was from the lesson. Let's just, let's use the data to determine if players are getting better. Yeah, so I, I, I truly think that's the next step. I truly think the kids um, need to play ball and need to play a lot of ball because this is a failure-based sport and at the same time, it's a results driven industry. So with that being said, I'm going to pay some guy. Obviously we sought him out. We did all this stuff, uh, 45 to $145 an hour. Imagine how much faster he can get if I handed him the baseball cloud printout of his stuff. Yep. Okay. Here's my son. Here's his average launch. Here's his exit. Uh, average exit he goes to right field this percent he goes to left field this percent he slugs at a 2-0 count on this he slugs not so good on a 3-1 he does this i read the whole grade before i even put a ball on the tee and figure out this kid's left or right hand 
Yep. I mean, that that's that's rapid lessons right there. If I was able to have a printout of what this kid has done in the last three to four weeks and be like, huh, okay, guess what? Um, we need to work on going up the middle, bud, right? Yep. We need to work on off speed, bud, okay? So instead of putting the ball on the tee for the first $500 that you spend to figure out what this kid's all about and what language he speaks baseball-wise, we, we, we got action right out of the gate. So I'm really excited about that because the better the players, the better the baseball, the better the show, the better the everything. Um, I'm excited to come back with you guys. I really am. Um, Sean, we're going to need a better background out of you. I know the podcast isn't going to tell it, but I don't know if you're in jail or not. But <laughs> I can imagine with your brains. KD, the Ducks are great. The, the Deer's great. I mean, it's pretty obvious. I played in the big leagues a long time. I don't know if you not a big deal. It's not yeah, a big no, deal. No, no big deal. But um, listen, I'm excited to come back. Um, I would love to create the most hostile debates of the old school guy telling us we're crazy, of the new school guy telling us we're reading the data wrong. Um, but at the end of the day, I think we're all on the same page of baseball is getting really close to turning into a golf score, right? You shoot 69, need that guy. You shoot 96, not going to cut it, right? We're getting pretty close to that. But ironically, in baseball, I'll throw out a really cool name, is Max Muncie, okay? Max Muncie's rotting in AAA. da 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 da, -da rotting in AAA. He goes over to the Los Angeles Dodgers and they're like, hey, bro, don't swing at this, swing at this. And when you swing at this, swing as hard as you can. Go get him, bud. Guy's in the home run derby and he's about to be rich as heck and all this stuff. And now he's hitting right in the middle of the lineup for the Los Angeles Dodgers protecting Mookie Betts when before he was with the friggin' Sacramento AAA A's team. Why? Dude, dude, I, I, I'll, I'll one up you with Garrett Cole. I mean, look at Garrett Cole. Look at Garrett Cole's data. It, anybody out there, go look at Garrett Cole's data from the Pirates to the Astros. His data, his metrics are all the exact same. His spin rate's the same. His vertical movement's the same. But the only thing that changed is his pitch usage and where he threw it. I mean, at the end of the day, that's the only thing that changed. I mean, we've done so many presentations on this to different organizations. I mean, it's just about using it in a way that's beneficial and, and for us, I mean, we talk about it all the time. I mean, Sean, Sean and I's biggest debate we go back and forth on that we are the most excited about is softball space. I mean, the softball space doesn't have the Garrett Cole example to use because nobody's shown the softball world any kind of attention or any kind of love because there's no major league or professional level of it. But at the end of the day, when you have systems like Yakker Tech and the, the cost of those, the, the softball space is getting ready to go through a whole new transition of capturing data and being able to use that data. And let me tell you, the one thing I've learned about the softball world, the softball world is a thousand, 5,000 times more passionate about the game than the baseball world. I'm just telling you that right now. I mean, in the end of the day, now we're going to show them love. We're going after that market to show what that softball does, what that, that big ball does. I mean, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be, it's, it's game changer. I, I, I love the softball side. I love the passion. I love the game. It's so fast. It's so quick. They're so good. Um, so imagine the, one of the biggest skills in softball offensively is the slap, right? The slap it into the ground and run. Like, do you know how many fast guys in the big leagues pop up to second base four times in a row? <laughs> right? Because launch angle, right? <laughs> well, how about unlaunch it, bro? Unlaunch it because yep. you could hit a home run if you stood on second base. <laughs> That's why softball's ahead of baseball, a thousand percent right there. So, boom, down through it, down through it. Oh, yeah, I was taught down through it. That's why I couldn't hit a lot of home runs. Well, you should have hit 400 like these girls do in softball, right? Hit it down in the hole instead of down at the shortstop. Dad is going to tell you how that is. And totally. I'm, I, I'm extremely excited to educate the softball world on this because um, they're, they're, they're ahead of the game. Uh, 
you know, all the stuff. I mean, talk about how fast the game is and this and that. And I mean, pitching, you know, like you're a pitcher, like every day you pitch. That's pretty cool. It's underhand, a little different there. But um, can softball help baseball? Can baseball help softball? I don't know, but let's give it a shot. Let's look at the numbers and see who's good and who's not. And um, I'm excited to come back with you guys. I mean, this, this is just step one. I think what we're doing is telling the world that the data company has merged with the receiving data company. And when you get two alpha deals like that merging to create this one big alpha, guess what's next? I don't know, you tell me. I mean, are we gonna start gambling on the game because we know where it's coming? Can we? Can I sit back at my my, my son's 10U game and throw, throw a little bit uh, bucks on? I think this kid's gonna throw it down and out or up and in, fan engagement. Uh, my gosh, we're, we're gonna put it all together. I'm gonna take a break, uh, probably get a drink and go mess around with my kids. You guys do the same. Sean, you, you, you got any closing um, closing arguments or closing statements that myself and the world need to hear? Sean's a laid back cat, man. Sean chills. He just goes about his business and captures his data, man. He, he just likes to sit behind the weeds and be the guy that nobody's ever heard of. Well, you can definitely say that, but, you know, in closing, I mean, like this is exciting for everybody. I mean, I'm a big believer, you know, like keeping the main thing, the main thing. And, and, you know, Yakutech where our shortcomings were, you know, were like the end user experience or the, the app and, you know, just, just all these little things, the speed of the data transfer. And, you know, we're, we've been able to alleviate a lot of that, but to be able to, you know, formally partner with, uh, baseball cloud and, and give the at the end of the day the player uh, better information where they can visualize it better they can see it you know because most of these kids you know I, you know I, I like looking at numbers and spreadsheets all day but you know the average kid just wants to see it in a, in a different way and um, that wasn't what we were good at you know we were really you know and we put all our focus into the, the data capture part of this but you know it's exciting to where we're going um, and, you know, uh, yeah, at the end of the day, I'm very laid back. <laughs> but as Katie said, and no, I'm not in a jail. It's my new house. So appreciate you. Maybe if you want to come help me decorate and, you know, give me another order. I'm going to come decorate. We're going to hold up shop and it's going to be coffee, coffee with Sean. And uh, you're just going to tell us some stories about being like a D1 manager when you're about the same age as the players, which means you're pretty smart, <laughs> pretty good at stuff like that. Hey, 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 and he makes a mean breakfast burrito, dude. I'm telling you, it is legit. It's as good as they come. It changed my life. It, it got me in with my wife. My, my wife is happy. Sean, I need to know, is it the ingredients on the breakfast burrito <laughs> or is it the wrap? Right, you have a bad rap, it turns into a breakfast taco. It's, it's all about the Indian on that one, not, not so yeah. much the it's all about the Indian, not the arrow on that one. Okay, so your metrics and cooking with Sean. <laughs> okay. Well, what I tell you, what guys, uh, man, I, I, I think we uh, we opened up a fire hose, uh, open up your mouth, open up your ears. I'm excited about it. What, what a great team here. Um, yeah, what, what, what's what the world know, what, what's happening, what's what the world know, we're fully performance enhancing, uh, and we don't even need the FDA approved. So <laughs> we're in great shape. Uh, uh, Tommy, a, I love you. Yeah, man. that is a hell of a coach. Dad is going to tell the story. Um, and um, it, it, it just really – it, it solidifies the eye test, right? It, it, it really does. Like Ken Griffey Jr., elbow up, left-handed, hat backwards from when he was 10 all the way to the Hall of Fame. Yeah, got it, right? Guy's great. But come on, man, let's get the grinders. Let's get the junior college guys like me to the next level. Let's, like, tell me I need my spin rate to get to the D1 average level when I'm at some junior college in some tiny town in Missouri. Right. I, ju I just want to play at the next level. I don't want my parents to pay for college. I, I, I just got to do this. I love being on a team. I know I'm not getting drafted. So I just want to be on a team to pay for the school so I can go sell used Volvos for the rest of my life and own that company too, or whatever it is, who cares? But, um, I want to see what, let's, let's see what Ken Griffey Jr.'s data is. Uh, I mean, to me, that's what I, I want to see that. I mean, that's value. I mean, that's power. Hey, nobody's saying that that's wrong. I, I want to see that. I want to appreciate it. I mean, that's, that's badass information. 
Yeah. And I mean, too. Yeah. So w w when you all come back, I'm, re I'm really excited. You know, when I was reading one of my first major league scouting reports and I'm like a hundred percent, this guy wrote this report sitting behind a beam at Applebee's because it, it just doesn't match up with, with what I saw and what he was like putting down on paper, which was the eye test, you know? I mean, he was probably at Applebee's and he wore the, you know, he probably had the yard and, you know, the Applebee sampler deal. And I'm, my life's on the line. And he said he doesn't have a split, but he does have a split and all this stuff. But uh, I can't wait to tell you guys that story. We're going to check off in a little bit. And let's, let's do it again. Let's do it. I'm looking forward to it. This is going to be a great time. We're excited. That's great. Dude. See you guys. Over and out. <laughs>